it, it just shows you know that a lot of people are uh, unhappy with the current uh, monetary system which is dominated by uh, governments and central banks and that's why you know also this uh, the cryptocurrencies especially bitcoin is, is rising claudio john can you hear me now Yes, I can hear you now. Excellent, excellent. I have Claudio Grass on the line from Precious Metals Advisory, live from Switzerland. You can find him on the web at claudiograss.ch. Claudio, welcome back. How are you, sir? Thank you very much, Sean. Um, I'm doing fine. Glad to have you on the line. Claudio, as we're having this conversation today, Bitcoin is up more than $4,000 since yesterday having at least as we're having this conversation now sort of above nineteen thousand dollars never seen anything like it in my life and now we see the bankers freaking out they're afraid they can't handle the futures and they're going to get stuck holding the bag because all bitcoin does is go up this is i think the craziest story i've ever seen is what's going on with bitcoin right now your thoughts well hey i mean you know yeah bitcoin that's really um you know the more I read about it, and I, I, I told you, you know, I mean, we have this crypto value over here in Switzerland, and that, of course, you know, I'm a big fan of of, of, of cryptocurrencies and uh, the blockchain because it all goes towards decentralization. But I, I have to tell you, you know, the more I read, uh, the more I'm also confused. And uh, and when I see how these prices are going up, I mean, it's it's just uh, it's just amazing. Um, what, what you have, you know, all these futures, you know, when the banks basically come in, uh, they try to, you know, short or uh, you know, use those fina financial instruments, which they're also using in the, in the banking system. Um, you know, it, it, it has, of course, you know, it has an impact. Um, and, you know, when it comes to Bitcoin and the price as such, I mean, I really don't know how far it can go. Uh, but I also don't know if it's really a store of value. Um, so... You know, most likely I'm not the right person uh, to come up with a really, you know, precise answer because uh, I think, yeah, the future is really uncertain. And, and still the biggest the biggest threat, you know, when it comes to Bitcoin is basically the government. And uh, if it's coming at, if it's coming too big, I don't know how they are going to react. You know, I don't know how what kind of rules and regulations they're going to change at the same time. You know, you still need to, to grow the market. You still need an interface between uh, you know, when we talk about bigger, bigger money, you need an interface between the banking system and, uh, and big Bitcoin exchanges. And um, I don't know, you know, if, if that is going to last also in the future or if it's becoming too big, uh, too big a threat for the government and, and their uh, paper money system that they might shut it down. I really have. I really I really don't know. I mean, there are there are. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of risks involved, which uh, are pretty hard to, to define right now. Uh, especially because, yeah, these prices, I mean, it's just going crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's huge. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it. And uh, we have Alan Greenspan coming out and calling it irrational. And look, it is irrational. I'm not making the argument that Bitcoin at $19,000 or $16,000 or even the $13,800 that Cliff High personally told me it would be at by February 2018. And that's when it was down around three or 4,000. Bitcoin got there early and it's still climbing higher. It is irrational. And uh, I don't know what to make of it, but I can tell you this. Honestly, as it pertains to that GBTC, all of the publicity, all the propaganda was coming out to try to slam it as we were moving towards this comics futures trading. And the big argument was GBTC trades at a premium to the underlying Bitcoin. And so therefore, the argument, the propaganda was short GBTC because investors will have a better way to play Bitcoin with the futures. And now the futures exchange on the comics, that appears to be falling apart. The bankers aren't sure they want to go there because they can't control Bitcoin and now they know it. And GBTC, based on the last three days of trading of Bitcoin, is now slightly trading below net asset value. And still today, as Bitcoin rockets higher by $3,000, there's a bid and an ask difference of around 10 cents on GBTC. I've never in my life seen manipulation like it. And I hope those shorts get caught with their pants down because what we're seeing on Wall Street and what we've been seeing for as long as you and I have been following the markets in my opinion Claudio are bankers that want to turn the people the average Joe upside down and get all the quarters and dimes and nickels left in their pockets out that's I think Wall Street for me is really nothing more than a uh, a swindle so I think that's why a lot of people want to turn to cryptos is because they're tired of being swindled by the banks and the banksters and the Wall Street criminals. Well, I mean, you know, it's, yeah, it's, you know, our markets, is, it's basically paper scam, you know, it's a credit market, uh, you know, the Wall Street is, is living off, of, you know, credit. 
and uh, liquidity which which basically has been pumped in uh, out of uh, out of nothing or coming out of nothing so um you know that's that's the western world uh, of course you know also the, the rest of the world is still uh, somehow trapped in the uh, in in that system but uh, you know for me I mean, as I said, you know, when it comes to Bitcoin, I really, you know, I would have to speculate. I really don't have a clear opinion right now what I should think about it and how high it can go. But when I see that they already start, you know, the same scams, basically, uh, you know, uh, leveraging uh, like, um, uh, you know, they, they do it in the normal uh, asset markets. Um, I, I don't know where, where, it's, where, it will, where it will go to. Well, you know what I've been saying for, you know, probably a year now, and this was back when Bitcoin was around 600, 500. He said, dip your foot in the pool because wouldn't you just feel sick to your stomach if this thing went to new highs and kept on going? And of course, at that point, the old high was 2000. You know, and here it's soaring into the teens. And yeah, it does make people feel sick to their stomach because it doesn't make any sense. But what I've been saying for a long time, Claudio, is that if the gold and silver markets were traded freely, free of Wall Street manipulation, free of COMEX manipulation and futures manipulation and international banking collusion manipulation, we would have seen this happening with gold and silver. And I think case in point is earlier this week, we saw somebody, some deep pocketed institution, throw $1.5 billion of notional gold at the market, taking gold back down to four month lows. Now that's what they want to do with Bitcoin and they can't do it. And so what I think we're seeing is the hyperinflation that should be obvious to everybody by rising silver and gold prices we're not seeing it in silver gold because silver and gold are manipulated so we're seeing it in the cryptocurrencies you think there's some truth in that well i mean it, it just shows you know that a lot of people are uh, unhappy with the current uh, monetary system which is dominated by uh, governments and central banks and that's why you know also this uh, the cryptocurrencies especially bitcoin is, is rising um uh, as you said, yeah, of course, you know, the gold market uh, is, is also it's the same paper scam in the West. You know, when you talk about uh, the COMEX uh, and also the, the OTC in, in London, I mean, it's, you know, they trade, you know, 1.5 million tons of gold uh, on an annual basis, um, for example, in 2016. And, you know, only at, at uh, uh, the OTC gold market in London. And when it comes to the comics gold futures, I mean, they reached what 57 million in contracts during 2016, which represents 179,000 tons of gold. So, I mean, we ever digged out 180,000 tons uh, approximately, uh, and it just shows, you know, how big that scam is. Um, but uh, you know, what what a lot of people have basically not not heard about is that uh, on 23rd, uh, 24th of November, uh, during the Russian um, bullion market conference, uh, the, the, the first deputy chairman of, of the Russian central bank, Sergei uh, Svetsov, he announced that the BRICS, the BRICS counties are considering the launch uh, of a gold trading platform within the group. So, you know, that's, that seems to be for me, for me, you know, when it comes to gold, that's, that's a pretty, uh, interesting aspect. And, and I'm surprised that most of the mass media haven't, haven't, uh, you know, spoken about that story because that's also uh, quite a big uh, game changer from my point of view especially when it comes to, to physical gold yeah well you know what as i've been saying you know unlike others out there that i used to interview people like andy hoffman andy hoffman came out recently and said that he sold all his silver this past summer and he was one of the biggest silver bulls you know that i'd ever interviewed and it's a little disheartening because a you know i had him on as a guest regularly but b I still believe firmly in my heart and soul, silver and gold in physical form are money. And if you hold it, you own it. And it's a great ballast in a stormy sea. I think we're going to see a lot of economic stormy seas coming up uh, in the future here, especially as it pertains to the petrodollar and these other fiat currencies. And um, I still believe that there is a place in our portfolios for physical precious metals, as well as some cryptocurrencies. I'm not throwing out the baby with the bathwater and saying, oh, it's only cryptocurrencies. I mean, I think that's lunacy at this point after the run up. You know, the smart money is probably selling some cryptos to buy more physical silver and gold at this point. Well, I think that would be the best thing uh, to do. I mean, you know, just take some of the of the earnings and the gains and uh, and put it back in something which is definitely undervalued. And uh, I mean, it's pretty hard. You know, I mean, it's pretty hard to get uh, money out of uh, of, the, of the crypto uh, system if, you know, if you don't have. I mean, <clears throat> you know, the beginning of the crypto system, I mean, it has to be, you know, I mean, for example, let's look at these ICOs, you know, they are doing, for example, in Switzerland. I mean, if somebody wants to invest in an ICO with existing uh, cryptocurrencies and he cannot 
uh, define the background of assets, for example, he's not bringing back that money into the system. So I think, you know, if we have a few guys which basically invested money and then they, they, they identified themselves and went through an exchange and they can uh, prove the background of asset, uh, I think they should really, you know, turn some of that money into, into physical gold. And I think the easiest way that could be done is, uh, I mean, I know only one company uh, which is, is doing a good job when it comes to that. It's called Voltoro. Uh, I think they're based out in the UK, and uh, there you can trade your Bitcoin uh, versus physical gold, which is also stored in Switzerland. So um, I think, yeah, you know, I mean, it's a great. I mean, it's great that you know people made so much money, and um, but I always believe, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, there are so many questions still open when it comes to the Bitcoin and the future and the, all the risks which are involved and also how governments are going to react and you know if they're going to change their status or if they come up with new regulations and will basically go after the people. I mean we don't know yet so um, but I think uh, and at the same time I mean it's accumulation I mean all the guys I know is they accumulate uh, cryptos I mean they don't trade and so it's it's a big wave right now, and, and the the future will tell. You know, if crypto really becomes a medium of exchange, accepted, you know, by a lot of market participants in the, in the future or not, or in if the meantime if something is happening that the regulators are going to shut down the banks, uh, you know, that they are going after the the, the exchanges and so on. Um, so you never know. I mean, you know, as I said, you know, the biggest crooks are our our existing governments. And uh, if they see that they could tax something, uh, most likely they will try to do so. Yeah, well, yeah, that's exactly what they want to do. And uh, the IRS has tried to get account holders' names from uh, Coinbase because they want to come after people for the taxes. A lot of people like me haven't sold any uh, because we want to just ride this thing higher. So I'll tell you one thing interesting right now. I'm trying to access Coinbase. It says service unavailable. <laughs> Coinbase is currently down for maintenance. Please Please try again later or see our status page for more information. So what do you think? Do you think it's a blow off top at $19,000 Bitcoin up three, four, five thousand 5,000 in a 24 hour period? Sure sounds like it. Well, I mean, you know, 2010, you know, you, you were able, I think, to buy with 100 US dollar uh, Bitcoins worth back then six cents. So, um, you know, that would be basically today what? I mean, <laughs> 30 million, something like that, 25, 30 millions. And now it's going up. Of course, you know, I mean, yeah, it's it's a small market. We don't know how many of the big, you know, we don't know how many players hold how much uh, Bitcoins in total. And um, so, I, you know, I'm just following it. I mean, it's, it's speculation. It's a lot of gambling involved. Uh, I truly believe, you know, I love it because it's decentralized. It's going against, you know, government uh, monopoly money. Uh, so, and I also truly believe that the blockchain has a huge potential in the future and it's definitely becoming a game changer. Um, but when it comes, you know, to the actual price of Bitcoin, uh, if it's uh, a bubble, uh, you know, or if the bubble can become bigger, if it can even go to 50 or 100,000, I mean, yeah, everything is possible. I don't know. Um, but, you know, as I said, I'm just, I'm looking into that. I'm not the Bitcoin specialist. But uh, a good friend of mine, you know, he has been, uh, he's a hacker and he basically told me that the SHA-2, uh, the hash uh, algorithm used by Bitcoin, was initially introduced uh, by the NSA. So there are still, you know, um, some doubts. Um, but on the other side, hey, everyone that is in the party, party is always fun. Uh, just make sure that you don't, um, yeah, that you don't become too greedy. And uh, if you have, you know, if you made uh, a fortune uh, within a very short period of time, yeah, think about take out some of the of the gains and uh, convert it into, uh, you know, another asset class, physical gold, physical silver, um, and, uh, and and diversify your risk. Yeah, absolutely. I saw a piece uh, just the other day. I think it was from the Daily Sheeple saying that one uh, percent of of all of the holders of Bitcoin own 50% of all the Bitcoin. So it is a bit of an elite game. Uh, look, with what, 21 million total Bitcoin ever ever minted, and right now I think there's only 16 million out there, and how many have been lost? How many, right. how many people on earth even own any Bitcoin, even a fraction of a Bitcoin? I'd say not too many. 
yeah absolutely so i mean this these are all you know these are all good questions and i think yeah i mean I, my friend you know i have a lot of friends they basically became also millionaires you know when because they they purchased bitcoin in the past so of course you know for them everything is shiny and they they truly believe you know that this is the only way to go and um and and for me i mean i'm not invested so far in bitcoin but um i i truly believe yeah it's it's a very interesting you know it, it opens a lot of possibilities in the future but as I said, you know, there are so many risks which we cannot judge on. And we, we still have, you know, a system which is dominated by governments. So we don't know, you know, how they are going to react and if they try to take it out. Um, and yeah, who has accumulated how many and what is going to happen? Let's assume if, if the price goes up to, I don't know, 25,000 and now some people are trying to sell. Uh, so that will be also kind of test you know to see can they still sell it what is happening to the value of of, of the cryptocurrencies um or or is it just you know that they yeah it remains within the network and, and there is no exit left i really so the future will tell i would just say i'm not negative i'm not you know i'm not positive uh, i like the concept but uh, there are so many question marks uh, and, and therefore i'm a bit hesitant yeah, no, I understand. And uh, guys, the reason I'm uh, asking uh, Claudio about Bitcoin is because it was on our list of things to talk about today. Cultural Marxism, BRICS announcing the gold trading platform and Bitcoin. And I started with Bitcoin because I do think this is an historical day. Uh, so we'll just wrap up the conversation about Bitcoin with this statement and your reaction. If you're Steve Mnuchin, the former Goldman Sachs alum who supposedly visited Fort Knox and said, the gold is safe. He didn't say it was there. He said it was safe. And my joke is that, yeah, it's safe in the hands of the Rothschilds. We haven't had an audit of Fort Knox since, what, 1954, 1956, something like that. Uh, not going to get an audit of uh, Fort Knox anytime soon. If you're Steve Mnuchin or you're Alan Greenspan, who today is freaking out and calling Bitcoin irrational, if you're one of these central bankers, are you not a little upset? You're probably freaking out right now watching Bitcoin do what it's doing because you can't control it like they can and do and have controlled the prices of gold and silver for a millennia. Honestly, I think this is the canary in the coal mine, and they're freaking out because they can't control it, which I love. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, the future will see, you know, will tell if they can control it. I mean, they can still, you know, shut some doors and, uh, and as I said, you know, change regulations uh, and so on. Uh, I mean, they have the, the government force on their side. And um, so, um, yeah, there, you know, of course, when it comes to the gold market, I think, you know, when it comes to gold, you know, for me, it's just, you know, great that, uh, you know, that the East basically is really uh, considering to launch this gold trading platform. And, uh, you know, it will be done everything in physical gold. So that's definitely a game changer where you even have, you know, a huge part of, of, of uh, the global population. I mean, when we look at the BRIC countries, so they account for about 40% of the world population and around 23% of the world domestic product. So um, I think in combination that they also announced uh, of pricing oil in yuan mm -hmm. and now using a gold backed futures contract in Shanghai, and they established in the past you know, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and the new development bank China uh, setting up, from my point of view, uh, an alternative to the post Bretton Woods establishment. And uh, so I, I truly believe this is a game changer as well. Also, it hasn't been around in, in the mass medias, um, but I think that's 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 quite a big move, uh, and especially for physical gold. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it's an important story, and you, you hit the nail on the head. They can change the rules, they can change the regulations, but that's fascism. It's government rule by force. You know, it's exactly why you know people like Jeff Berwick say, just get out of the country. You people in America think you're free. You're not free. If you think you're free, try to withhold your uh, taxes from the IRS. You know, if you think you're free. So hey, that's the bottom line. If, if they want to come after Bitcoin and try to change the rules of the game now, they're just going to reveal themselves to be the dictators they are. And it's the same reason so many of us have turned to gold and silver in physical form over the past 5, 6, 10, 15 years, Claudio, because we want liberty. We want honest money. We want something that's outside of the banking system, which is ripe for a crash. We don't want to be a part of their criminality, and yet they push it on us. They implement it on us with their rules and their regulations and their manipulation. Deutsche Bank, HSBC, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, manipulating the markets, manipulating the precious metals markets, and nobody ever going to jail. 
So you wanted to talk about cultural Marxism. Let's do that. And uh, let's first start by talking about fascism, this idea of government, corporatocracy, rule by force. You said it yourself. They have the guns. So they can change the rules. They can outlaw Bitcoin. But by doing so, they will only reveal themselves to be the dictators they are. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's right. I mean, we are living in a, in a, in a fascistic system. It's crony capitalism. It's basically the lines between uh, um, big business and, and, and big government. And, um, and they have worked hard, you know, to achieve that. And uh, I think one of the instruments they definitely used was, uh, you know, the uh, cultural Marxism, uh, which is from my point of view, an aggressive and totalitarian ideology, you know, which really aims to destroy individualism and independent thinking. And uh, of course, you know, the most disturbing aspect is that's really done and, and, and forced on us through our own institutions, um, which basically, you know, they try to enforce a cultural suicide uh, and that has been, you know, thought, uh, you know, executed uh, through the education system, the media, justice and the military. So, um, uh, you know, the fathers of cultural Marxism, uh, such as Antonio Gramsci and George Lukacs, as well as the members of the Frankfurt School, uh, like Horkheimer, Adorno, Marcuse, Fromm or uh, Habermas, I mean, they mentioned in the past that their battle cry is the long march through the institutions. And uh, when I look around, I can only congratulate to them because it seems that they achieved uh, an effective job. Well, they like to brainwash the populations, right? With their propaganda. They own the media. They own everything of importance. I mean, right, George Carlin got it right. They own it all. It's a big, <laughs> it's a big club and you ain't in it. So I think that's why we're seeing a revolution of those that are at least informed about cryptos to turn to the crypto space as a new avenue that hopefully is outside the reach of these criminals. And look, Bitcoin's not the only game in town. I think Litecoin is going to do extremely well over the next year. Uh, Ethereum certainly has the potential to continue doing well. And there's others that Cliff High and the WebBots report have talked about. I'd take a look at uh, OMG, OMC Go, and EOS, the new Dan Larimer startup that threatens uh, that could be a threat to uh, the Ethereum platform. There's a lot of good ones out there. So those of us that are free thinkers and... Uh, want to get outside this system. We're going to continue to look at the cryptos. We're going to continue to look at physical silver and physical gold. And, uh, you know, I would recommend that people get in touch with you, too. If you're uh, inside, can people inside the United States buy precious metals uh, from you? Or is it primarily uh, or, or do you primarily deal with people in uh, in Europe, Claudio? No, basically, I mean, I have uh, established a network with uh, partners over here in Switzerland and Liechtenstein, which I have carefully uh, selected. And so I can... Um, you know, I can serve clients from all over the world, uh, you know, institutionals, uh, private individuals, high net worth individuals, uh, and to come up you know, with tailor-made solutions so they can get in touch with me and I will advise them and, and find the best, the best solution based on their specific needs. So uh, for you as clients, it's not a problem at all, uh, you know, to buy uh, physical metals over here uh, through the channels I'm going to uh, um, suggest to them uh, so that they really can also build up uh, another, you know, insurance in a, in a, in a yeah, safe jurisdiction, at least when it comes to private property rights uh, in, in physical in physical assets, you know, such as gold and silver uh, when kept uh, outside the banking system. And do give us your website information and perhaps even an email if you want people to email you directly if they're interested in working with you, Claudio. Absolutely. You know, my webpage is uh, claudiograss.ch and they can always shoot me an, an email at uh, info at uh, claudiograss.ch. Very good. Get the real deal. Get it in physical form and take delivery. Guys, that's Claudio, C-L-A-U-D-I-O, grass, G-R-A-S-S dot C-H, Claudio, grass dot C-H. Claudio, thanks so much for joining us. I'm sorry to just drown you in all this Bitcoin news, but I do think this is a very historical day <laughs> that we decided to have our conversation on. This was a pre-planned calendar date, but boy, we definitely hit an historical date as Bitcoin is up, what, 5000 bucks in the last... 48 hours. I've never seen anything like it. So definitely a big story to follow. And uh, guys, check out Claudio Grass at claudiograss.ch. Claudio, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sean. Take care. Bye -bye. All right. You take care as well. And guys, thanks so much for tuning in. You know how much we appreciate your support at sgtreport.com for real news, the antidote to corporate propaganda 24-7. God bless. Bye-bye.